Now, the biggest issue that's coming up that we really needed to be here for is the HIPAA compliance. And the, does everybody know what PHI security is? Protected health information. When you go to a doctor's office, they have you sign all these things saying, we can send this to this one, we can't send this to this one. We can't talk to anybody else except you or we can talk to your spouse if you tell us we can. Protected health information and security. Again, it's gotten really, really, really difficult. And the reason it's getting really difficult is because everything's going technology. Everything's being done on email. Everything's being done on cell phones. Everything's being done by computer. All of the world's information can be found by somebody who knows what they're doing. We have to document what we have done to secure that information from loss or exposure to people who shouldn't have it. If I have an employee who has a, um, an illness that even his family doesn't know he has, we can't say anything. That if we have an employee that has to go to the hospital because they've got pneumonia from an immune deficiency or uh, disease or anything, we can't say anything. We may know. We cannot say anything because nobody is supposed to know. That was his choice. That information has to be kept under lock and key and it has to be kept behind sealed lips. Some of the grounds for dismissal are getting so dramatic. If you go to a party, slug back a few, somebody happens to mention somebody's aunt or something like this went to the hospital and then somebody pipes up and says, oh yeah, we took her to the hospital in our ambulance. Breach of confidentiality. Right there, done. You would be fired on the spot. No questions asked. But not only that, that is a reportable incident to the Office of the Inspector General. Within your company, you have to set up a structure and a security officer who has to know about every breach of confidentiality. If you go down to the coffee shop and you're sitting there having a coffee, having a brew, and you just sit there and you're talking about all the things that happened here today. Who had this accident? What was this accident? What was this call? What was that call? That is breach of confidentiality. That is a public release of information, a public release of information, of protected health information. It's nobody else's business what goes on here. It's nobody else's business who you transport or what you transport. It's only that person or the responsible party for that person can be told. Immediate grounds for dismissal. All these policies are going to have to be written up. All of these policies are going to have to be put into place and they're going to have to be enforced. Once a year, a booklet of every incident of PHI security breach and it's all scheduled out, something small. Say I send a bill to a patient and it ends up going to the wrong member of the family and they open it and they call us and say, oh, they don't live here anymore. And they opened it. That's a minor breach because it's not going anywhere else and they've promised to destroy it. And they are a family member. We would have to notify the person who was supposed to get the bill. We also have to log it into our PHI security book once a year, within six months of the close of the year, we have to report that book and every incident in there, no matter how small, for security of uh, protected health information to the Office of the Inspector General in Washington. That's how weird it's getting out there. But it's all because of the free information on your cell phones. It's the free information on your laptops. It's the free information that people talk about in a small community. You know everybody, but you can't say a word out of the station. That's all there is. You can't do it. So I'm going to be working with your officers on HIPAA, which is the Health, um, Health Insurance Portability Patient Protection Act. That is coming up again, the changes in September of 2013, but it's the PHI security information. Some of the things that they've come up with and I'm going to be writing a booklet on this and I'll be putting together a video in more depth so that anybody who needs to watch it, if they're being warned, they, you can have them watch that. 
you can have them read this information. Yes, this is the summary. This is the gobbledygook summary of the HIPAA Protection Act and PHI privacy rule. Specifically, you're a covered entity. You're what's known as a covered entity. When you're reading any of this information, you are the covered entity. You are the ones that have to keep this information confidential. You have to ensure the confidentiality, the integrity, and the availability of all electronic PHI that you create, receive, or maintain, or store and transmit. Sounds like a lot, but it's not. When you do a trip sheet, that's an EPHI. That's an electronic protected health information. It has dates of birth, social security numbers, people's names, date of the incident, what happened at the incident, any illnesses, any past medical history. It's all on there. It's done as an electronic data. Now you've got it on your laptop. You've probably written down some scratch notes while you were doing the call. You've also got hold of the hospital face sheet. The hospital has a business trading partner agreement with you, we hope, that says they can swap information between the two of you. So I hopefully the hospital's covered their behind. I'm sure they have. Well, it'll be in the booklet. We'll get that done. What I'm trying to do is get you ahead of the game. Medicare is taking back money. They're taking back large sums of money. They will do 100 reviews of transports, 100 reviews. They will come down and say 9% of them were okay. 38% of them, they did not verify, you did not validate that the need for stretcher. 42% of them is the mileage because of the other two added together. Mileage, you deny half, you denied the mileage as well. There's 100%, you're done. 100% of your money comes back. Now, when the money comes back, when Medicare, when Medicare or any insurance carrier, Medicare, the state, Medicaid, they can do railroad Medicare, they can do uh, uh, United Mine Workers, anything that has to do with insurance can be taken back at any time. You set up a payment plan and you go through all the rigmarole. Now we have to pay that, you have to pay that money back. However, are you guys all gonna give your payroll back so that we can do it? Are you guys gonna give your payroll taxes back so we can pay it back? That was done three years ago. But you're not gonna give me your payroll, you're not gonna give me the overhead that run this place for the past three years. So not only are you paying back money that you were paid three years ago, but you've lost all that payroll, all those payroll taxes, all the overhead, the upkeep, the maintenance and supplies. It's hitting you double. You're not paying back $100,000. You're paying back $200,000. You're losing basically $200,000. It is so important that you do your trip sheets properly. It is doubly important that what goes here stays here. It does not go out of this place. I don't care if you're in your own home and two of you are EMTs. You do not talk out of place. You do not discuss your runs out of place. You do not discuss, discuss injuries, accidents, anything that could be held liable. Again, the, the owners of the company or the uh, chief and associates, they all have to get together and come up with an officer, come up with a plan of action to protect you. I have to do it. I have to send in my reports. That report has to have a duplicate to whoever, whichever company has an issue. If you have no issues, you're fine. But it has to be so documented. No issues for fiscal year 2013.